illiterate, actually still pagan, part two. <coughs> For the blind man, let alone one in an era that could consider itself still heroic, a death by execution would be preferable to one through suffocation and sewage by an indignant prospective mother-in-law. This footnote came back to me the other night. I hadn't seen Y for some time, but I still trace their career. And I find the conversations we used to have, the ones we had out loud, no longer have any place to go. And I find myself insomniac and head speaking, the medievalist chat we would engage in. Alone, at night, constantly, and never completely. His own studies have progressed, and I guess our interests have bifurcated. He is slipping into the territory he always railed against, the very reason for starting this research in the first place. Some kind of political weaponization of a long dead woman, employing tropes of femininity, dark ages, semi-paganism, and pure fiction. I mean, he's still got his facts. And had he not been such a fucking character, I guess we would have parted ways anyway. Or maybe we would have done something actually worthwhile, maybe. The footnote about the blind man refers to a marginal scribble in one of three manuscripts that form the basis of our work, the central lie we seek to undo. A footnote about some marginalia emphasizing a mistruth about the queen who lived with power and precision, but whose agency and literal actions have either been misfiled or destroyed. An old doubt returns. I remember once, near the end, you were really going off on one about how all evidence of coniferous actions had been erased or supplanted and how unthinkably misogynist it was. But you know that as well as I, there's plenty about her in the records. It's just the heroic character we want is oddly absent from these records. We either have old slander, wicked women undoing their virtuous husbands' lives or careers, or we find her pen and her name across legal and ecclesiastical documents, but nothing of a woman. I consider this lazy journalism. Could it be she just got stuff done, organized instead of all that chat? The footnote returns, and I realize I have an amnesia about which methods of execution were common in Mercia at the time, but surely suffocation and sewage would be worse than most other options to anyone. <laughs> I guess being skinned could be worse. Would being burned be worse or starved? This is useless, I cannot sleep. The pre-dawn is looming. It is colder than I want it to be. The local Dark Skies campaign has made it darker, and my fanciful notions of the old gods prospering in darkness props up. Exactly the kind of magical thinking bullshit I was chastising you for hours previous. I would give my eyes to see you. July 6th, 794 AD, near Sutton St. Michael, Mercia, 4.52 AM.